These are huge. There must be a ton of water underground here. Today we want to talk to you guys about solar and what we've experienced with it the last couple years, what we've learned, the ins and outs, the goods and bads, and just some info that we think that you're going to find really valuable. If you're new to this channel, we're two rebels off grid. We left the city to get out into the rural part of the U.S. We live in southeast uh, Arizona and Cochise County. We're building an off-grid homestead from the ground up. And we're learning a lot about being off-grid and solar power and things of that nature. So follow along with us. And if you find value in what we're sharing with you, we would really appreciate a like and subscribe. So we're in, this is the San Pedro River. People joke around about this river. They call it the quote unquote mighty San Pedro. <laughs> it has actually got water in it right now, which is kind of unusual. Um, usually it, you only see it running during the monsoons and there is a little bit of water. We came down here today because um, it's a nice, cooler place to be. It's like 100, and, I think it's 102 today. And uh, the temperature is nicer down here. We can get into the shade. Our willow dog, our black dog right here, she loves getting in the water and cooling off. Um, and it's just a nice break away from the heat. Yeah, so we're enjoying a small, short hike. We're not trying to exert ourselves. Um, trying to stay in the shade. It seems pretty decent, but we're kind of next to a overpass here So you're gonna hear maybe some cars going by and yeah. uh, we can't help that but yeah the water It's not crystal clear, but I I guess that most of the year this thing is dried up and all the water is underground mm -hmm. Flowing instead, but it's one of the major rivers coming through our county yeah. If not the only major river, I'm not sure I think it's the major only one and you'll see like there's these huge trees around us and they are um, they're getting water from the ground because they're these these wash rivers even though they're dry a lot of the time there is still probably I think there's actually more water underground than there is above ground that we can see so these trees are you know huge and they're doing really well here so it's a nice it's nice I wish we had big trees like this on our property but someday yeah, so before we get on to our main subject that we're going to talk about, there's a big pink elephant in the room. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, probably my arm. So, last time, I think on the last video, or the one before that, Doug had a sling on his right arm. Now I have one on my left arm. Um, we're falling apart. We are falling apart. Between the two of us, we have two whole arms. Um, but last week I did something, I think it was when we were lifting the generator, maybe, but I had some calcifications in my left shoulder and then I ended up, um, I think it's just a partial tear in my shoulder, but I went to the emergency room last night and it was definitely a tear, um, but how thick of a tear it is, I gotta go get an MRI and find out, and then I'm looking at either, um, either a lot of physical therapy or surgery, hopefully not surgery, but I just, my shoulder is in an extreme amount of pain and I haven't been sleeping and it's hard to lift my arm up, so Doug's been helping me with little things like putting my shoes on and he's been helping me get dressed because I, I can't, <laughs> I can't lift my left arm at all, so anyway, that's what's going on. Yeah, and we just did a video, like five videos back on injuries on the homestead so go back and look at that one again if you've seen it before um yeah so let's get on to the main subject here which is about off-grid solar power generators whatever you want to call it and people relying upon them too much we had some pretty sunny days and we had two solar panels connected to this charging charging station here which is how we power our laptop and that. So we had two of those panels, which during the winter, that's perfect because between the two, we get like maybe 100 watts coming in. 
and that's fine for this charger, but I believe Kerry said this charger cannot exceed 200 watts input. Had the two solar panels still connected during the summer and had them facing dead center on the sun all day long. And Kerry had noticed that this cable here was getting super hot and it ended up frying the plastic insert melted. So I dismantled this thing. I wanted to see if it could unscrew, if the input port could easily be unscrewed and then we could just replace it. But it turned out that that is soldered to the board that's in there. So we couldn't do that. I bought a new cable and we put it in there and it's very loose in there, but it can still receive a charge. See, it's charging, I'm getting 200 watts. That day that this fried, we had 500 watts coming in and that's a big no-no, so it completely <laughs> melted that cable. So if we get to the point where um, this no longer receives a charge because of this cable, I'm gonna splice this cable, drill a hole in the side of this baby and directly connect it off of the panel to the cables that go to charge the battery. So that would be my, my MacGyver move in the future, but this would no longer be able to stay in the house because it'd be definitely a fire hazard. And this is not made to be outdoors, so I could have the elements. Mainly use this one to power our computers, our internet. So it's pretty important that this one stays. Solar power, which makes complete sense because we are out here. It's it's great. If you're going to do solar, this is the part of the country that you want to do it. But it is not perfect, right? And so, because we do have days, especially during the monsoons, where it'll be really overcast and cloudy, and we might not get much solar power for maybe like three days in a row. And what happens is, if you don't get solar power, you're, you are unable to fill those battery banks that you have up that you use to run your stuff. Then we have this little guy. He's uh, basically, we, we lately have been bringing this in the car with us as a charging station for our phones when we're in remote locations. Um, but this guy, he also went on the skits and wasn't working very well. <laughs> it wasn't taking in a charge. So I got on the internet and figured if you hold down certain buttons, you can reset the computer that's software to the original state and that seemed to have fixed it because now we have 100 percent charge on this can't rely on this for anything powerful like if we were to run a fan off of this it would only last maybe a couple hours if you're going to go by solar chargers you need to get multiple ones not just one uh, it's just a good idea you just have to think about that like what is your backup plan going to be because you could we've had times where we just we couldn't charge our batteries at all and you know they're messing with the climate they're messing with the weather <laughs> we do believe in contrails and that they are doing stuff up in the sky i mean it's proven now they talk about it on mainstream media so i don't know why we couldn't talk about it here of course of course we know that train planes make water vapor when they fly and stuff but there is and i can't remember the term for it um but it is basically aluminum coated glass that they spray into the atmosphere and they can use that to do um, they can use that to kind of manipulate the weather they can use it to create storms they can use it to um, dry things up as it were or so, to keep you from charging your batteries on your solar system <laughs> i suppose that's possible so anyway we yeah we definitely fall along the lines of believing things like that but of course it's not always that it's sometimes just the way nature is so is our third one and we have a fourth one but we are going to keep that one box and wait till the house is up and done so that we can have something to power like a remote building somewhere um, these are good but we've already noticed that the USB ports are already starting to not work anymore um, compare considering how expensive these are that's a great disappointment the warranty is probably no longer valid you have to think about solar power, what's your backup going to be. We, Doug is going to talk about the generators that we bought and um, they've been great, but you're still relying on fuel, right? You're still relying on gasoline or propane or diesel, whatever it runs off of. 
And so you have to think about that. And you have to think about, like, is that realistic? So a lot of people are talking about how their generators, these modern generators, they have carbon monoxide or detectors on them. Um, let's see. Right here. So this is a light on my generator. Um, it started coming on. I started getting real, almost like it had a bad spark plug on it. I didn't know what to do. I started looking around. You're starting to have generator problems in the heat. The first thing you want to check, especially if you got them sitting outside, which I shouldn't be having this sitting outside, is your hoses. What I found is all the hoses on this sucker, just during one year, they're already starting to break. They get really brittle and fragile. I believe they make all these out of soy now instead of actual rubber. <laughs> so check your hoses first. Um, replace your hoses if you see anything like this. And then I was able to get this thing to run because as long as that carbon monoxide detector was run uh, on, this thing wasn't working and it was really sketchy to even try to start it. All generators are notorious to not like heat. They already heat up a lot as it is. So you add 105 degree direct sun to these things and they do not like that one bit. Um, you'll be lucky to get it cranked over. If it does crank over and you plug something into it, it's probably not going to last more than five minutes and it'll shut off on its own again. All these hoses down here, these hoses, these hoses, these hoses all will fail you eventually and it's usually the first thing to go is what I found on these generators. So if you have any issues with your generators, clean out your filter, um, check all of your hoses for sure. Uh, I believe, in my opinion, the generators have been, for off-gridding, far more reliable than solar. They're noisy and they're not, they're not cheap to run all the time, but in 105 heat, when that trailer's at 120 degrees, you really need something that's gonna run an air conditioner and blow all that hot air out of there. Either that or just stay outside like I tend to do. Get a generator, don't rely on your solar. It makes sense to have solar out here because we have sunshine all the time, but let's say, you see that haze out there? If you have haze like that, you're gonna be reduced by 50% anyways. See that house way out there? They're off gridders too. They are all fully solar hooked up and they still run their generator on days. So I'm telling you, you think that you're gonna hook up a nice robust solar power station and it's gonna be reliable? Not always the case. And in winter time, when you have overcast days for a couple days in a row, you're definitely not gonna have solar. So that's when you might wanna think in alternative ways of powering your homestead. The generator that we had, uh, I guess like two weeks ago, it finally died and we had bought the Harbor Freight warranty on it and we traded it in and, and we were able to get a replacement generator and we went with a little bit bigger wattage generator. We went from a 3800 to a um, 6500 which runs the trailer a lot easier. It's heavy. The thing is like 165 pounds so when we moved it out of the car that's probably when I did the tear in my shoulder. You gotta keep it out of the sun. You gotta keep it somewhat cool. It's still gonna be hot, but it's not gonna be in the direct sun. So, um, I just took some cardboard for now. This is innovation, guys. A couple pieces of cardboard I put on top. Trying to give it a lip so the sun can't get it from the side. Um, what's gonna happen next? You won't be able to hear me talk because the generator is going to be running, but I'm going to hook up this fan and the fan will be plugged into the generator. So it's self cooling itself. So the fan will be blowing, getting air circulation in through here. And that seems to have been doing the trick to keep this thing from overheating and kicking off. So who came up with that idea, Doug? Who did? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So here we go.
that generator has been great. It holds seven gallons of gas, which will run basically for like two stints of six hours each. So you have to think like, are you gonna turn the generator on first thing in the morning and run it all day? We tend to do it later in the afternoon, like around three, and we just run it for like three or four hours until the sun goes down and things start to cool off and then that kind of blows the hot air out. Is it absolutely necessary? No, it's more for our comfort. So do you really need solar power? Personally, I do well in the sun. Personally, I do well in the cold. I do good in the heat and the, the freezing. I, as an individual, would probably do probably fine without solar at all, without energy at all. Because I rarely pick up my phone. I don't even need a phone, actually. If everything went primordial, if everything went back to the Stone Age today, for the most part, I'd be very uncomfortable, but I be believe I'd be okay. Um, but when you're with other people, and you, you have to be more responsible with the more people that are under your stewardship. Um, and that's where the answer changes to, yes, I need energy. Yes, I need power. Um, but when that power fails and you're accustomed to being cool or being warm in the winter, that is when things can become really benign and go downhill from there without power. And it is it can become very dangerous not having power if you're not accustomed to those changes in climate or if you have to use internet for uh, work or something like that, or just for plain old communications. Um, I almost think homesteading's become like this fashionable thing now, and I kind of don't like that. I don't like the idea that people think it's just this cool lifestyle that that is, um, as long as you got the money, you can do it, right? And that's how it's become. And a lot of the vendors, a lot of the, the corporations and companies out there selling all this equipment that may have been cheap, you know, 15, 20 years ago, have realized that this has become a big market and more and more people are going off grid. But with this comes with corporations, they typically want to make a bigger buck off of each product so where I'm going at so they send their blueprints off to China and China recycles your old plastic bottles and builds you a car with it right <laughs> uh, same with the solar equipment it's getting cheaper and cheaper it's getting cheaply built and <clears throat> so yes when you first come out here you're doing your little fashion show reality TV show out here um, you're gonna buy all this equipment, but guess what? This equipment, realistically, is probably only gonna last you two years. So unless you have the funding to rebuy a whole new solar power plant on your property, or a new generator every two years, you're gonna be out of luck. And then you're gonna know what real homesteading is. Not the 20th century homesteading, I'm talking cowboy days would you be able to survive in the rugged west 150 years ago just ask yourself that because you might be taken back to that one day we may be taken back to that one day when i say you i mean me actually also you know that whole thing one finger pointing three pointing back that goes for this little rant that i'm talking about also but things break down, things degradate. And that can be very dangerous if you're out here in 105 degree temperatures and you're relying upon a modern made Chinese built solar system or 
you know even some of the american built stuff is getting pretty sketched out because they're learning that the cheaper they make it the more they can up the price and uh sell you basically a car made out of plastic instead of something you would have saw back in the 30s and 40s which is all steel and they are still running today <laughs> um everything's designed to fail so that they can have returning customers just remember that so if you are buying stuff look for quality pay extra if you have to um if it has that foreign language on there that you cannot read or understand then you probably should just turn the other way and look for a better opportunity even though those opportunities are getting fewer and fewer these days our choices are getting limited I've used this analogy before and it's an analogy of allegedly when we are to send men to mars right it's going to be a capsule and maybe several capsules that follow it or go before it and it's going to contain all the energy all the water all the batteries everything that's going to be needed to keep people alive on that planet that's the same thing that we're doing here on the homestead the only difference is we can drive to town in half an hour right if we had to or if we had to walk out of there maybe a day's walk right maybe two days walk actually but when you are set up like that and everything's under god's control and your ability to keep that equipment running is is life or death and i'm saying literally you're in the desert sometimes during the year yeah you can get away with any electricity at all and be perfectly fine but yeah. in the dead of the summer no water just blaring heat it is realistic that you could run out of water on a short walk off your property and not be able to walk and actually dry up and mummify and die right <laughs> yeah. so you yeah. when you buy your equipment you need to think of that you're a capsule on a planet with no outside help and your equipment needs to work so you need to take into consideration your costs what you're going to buy and do your research on what you, what that product is because you need to really read the reviews and make sure it's going to hold up to the to time panels the panels i got them stacked like this because two of them don't work anymore they were fried in the sun believe it or not these are designed to be in the sun but they can fry so typically what happens is the wiring here will burn too much energy going through them and they'll burn and there is ways of repairing this but i'd need a shop so i'm keeping i'm holding on to these panels that don't work we bought them used and so we weren't expecting them to last 10 years anyways but uh, problems we've been having is things like cables and again just like the generator its cables getting frayed and everything everything's made out of soy now so it only makes sense that these wires aren't going to last very long so you might to fix these you might have to splice them or just order a new one another problem that happens is these connectors they um, the more you take them apart and put them together, the more they loosen up and um, sometimes they're just loose and you just got to tighten them up. But uh, other times they're just, you're going to have to duct tape them. Yeah. Like I've done over here. You duct tape some here. But like I said, don't rely on your solar panels. Don't rely on solar at all. Panel on the RV burned out in like the first six months and i replaced it with that one you see up there i have two up there actually a uh, smaller one and a bigger one and that's been powering i doubled up my batteries on the trailer it came with one battery bought two matching batteries that were made in the same month and the same set it's the same set that's the only way you can do uh, dual batteries so we put those in those two panels power it up so we have heat all night long now we, have, we can run the fans that are naturally built into the trailer. Um, anything else that requires power, we have plenty of power that's built into the trailer to run your water pump and stuff like that. Panels, we got them at Santan Solar in Phoenix. Go there, you can get bundles of used panels. It's not that pricey. You can buy the new ones there too, but those are pricey. Out of our budget. And we'll just replace these. Um, I'm going to keep the panels. Even if they're not working, here's two more that aren't working. Um, 
I'm gonna keep them because when I have a shop, eventually I can repair them all. It's not really that hard of a fix. But right now, the moral of the story is have extra panels because these things, the sun is so intense. Um, and because they're used and have already probably seen a decade of use before we bought them, that we don't expect them to last for very long. But if it's a really hot day and you were relying on solar that day, uh, have a backup like a generator. Yeah, because for an example, let me give you guys an example of just a scenario to think about. You know, we have pets. We have a lot of outdoor animals. We have three indoor animals, which are these two dogs and our 18, 19 year old cat, Boo. And Boo lives in the trailer 100%. She's never been outside. She does not want to go outside. And um, it gets warm in there. So on a 105 degree day, it's going to be 110 in the trailer. Now, if we leave her there with the air conditioning running, if the air can, if the generator overheats or or has you know something happens and it shuts off and the trailer is shut, you know it's all locked up and everything. Um, Boo Kitty is going to quickly not you know it's going to get really hot in there really quick and she's not going to make it. Uh, anyway, if we we can't do that, so like today when we're out here with the dogs, it's like it's 102 or 103, and she's okay. Um, we open all the windows up. We make sure she has plenty of fresh as cold water as we can get her um, but you have to think about that you have to think ahead about that because it's is that practical for you Do, are you going to come out here in homestead and you're going to have a small dog that maybe is going to be in the trailer or kids that you're going to have in the trailer like you really have to think that through and think like what can you tolerate and what's realistic because it isn't always going to be easy right it's there's <laughs> Especially this time of year, I get I have a hard time this time of year. I just get overheated and stuff. It's not impossible to deal with. It's just it it can just be challenging. So if you're somebody that likes to sit in an air conditioned building all day, all night, it's going to be tough. Um, unless you have a ton of extra money to buy gasoline for your generator, or you have a really good solar system that you know you know how to keep running because if they do. It, it does require maintenance. They do break sometimes, so. Yeah, so um, the moral of this video <laughs> or this story yeah. is do not trust fully in solar or yeah. generators or any alternative powers of means. And be ready in case that stuff does not work. What's your plan B? Figure it out before you come out. Yeah for sure and that you know that goes for if you're on the grid too like if you're on the grid if you live up in Phoenix what are you gonna do if the building power goes out if you're in an apartment right. and it's 118 or 120 degrees out what yep. are you gonna do yes, How are you gonna, you're gonna get in your car probably and turn the air conditioner on but if you've got pets and kids and things like that you know and it's not always practical to have a generator as a backup because they're not cheap so you know it goes for whether you're on grid or off grid I think for sure. I think Except it's always good for redundancy. The difference is, is we're more in control of what's going on around here as opposed to Phoenix. When that power goes down and that water is disconnected, what are they going to do? Yeah. It's yeah. pretty frightening to think about. So guys, that's it for this video. Mm -hmm. I guess I should explain. I pumped out 20 of our member videos only. Mm -hmm. Uh, I stopped doing that because we only had like two subscribers and eventually no subscribers to the members only. So I decided I didn't want you guys to go without. So it's kind of confusing. There are videos that have gone on for the past two years and there's like 20 of them. Some are really short, some are long, but we want you guys to enjoy those videos yeah. and uh, hope you it's enjoy them. But, yeah, but they're not B, recent. <laughs> it's B-roll video, basically B-roll that we put out. And yeah. it just might give you a little bit more insight to, into us and our homestead and what we've been doing. A little bit more like less scripted stuff. Yeah. So enjoy. All right. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>
That's actually probably way more shadier than down here. That was it, really. Is that it? Go in the water, we're leaving. Aww. <laughs> so cute. She's, She's our water dog. She's what? She's our water dog. Yeah, it saddens me that we're out in the desert when she's such a water dog. Yeah.